And we're back with the second leg. Uh, Monday Thomas joins us this morning as we talk sports. Monday Thomas, how are you today? And thank you for joining us. I'm feeling great. I'm great this morning. I mean, uh, Elections Eve, I'm excited for it. But I'm also very excited about what is happening in uh, Africa as far as uh, the Honor 20 is concerned. Great, great, great to be here. Well, quickly, let's get straight to the crux then. 11 home base players uh, will make the Tigers squad for the World Cup qualifiers. How does this make you feel? I mean, uh, it's a mixed feeling for me, you know. I'm not saying there's anything wrong if we're going for home base players, but there is certainly something wrong when we don't have the structure, when we don't have the machinery to ensure that this fine talent, without a doubt, Nigeria is a country full with a, a field with talent, left, right, center. Is it football or basketball? We've got talent, but we don't have the right structure, especially in basketball. We don't have a working league. We don't have a, a league that is as close to, let's say, the world standard. I mean, if you go back in time, you, you wouldn't see Nigeria featuring in the current basketball league. I mean, there is a particular basketball league that happens in Africa, and we only saw Rivers Hoopers in the first edition, of course, and they made a mess of them themselves. All I'm saying is that there is no structure in the league in the country. And how good are these home base players? Mercy, we're talking about the World Cup, and uh, we're talking about the final qualification series that will be that will be starting today by 2 p.m. for the D Tigers. And now you're talking about 11 home base players and one free agent that plays in the United States of America. Uh, it's not good enough for me. Now I'm going to repeat that I'm not absolute. I'm not totally against uh, going for home base players. But home base players that don't have a great platform in the country, what are we going to expect from them in Angola later on this afternoon? Hmm. Uh, it's interesting to hear here a, a sports analyst uh, express uh, lack of um, uh, uh, confidence in the in the national team that is made up of um, eleven home base players and just one uh, free agent. Uh, Olatunji Graham, <laughs> but but I mean, you guys are the ones who were hammering Gerard Raw, you know, for not taking uh, a lot of uh, our local league players, you know, into consideration. Um, I mean, so I'm trying to because you guys hounded him out of hounded him out of a job, you know. Where I mean, he, yes, you guys hounded him coffee, out of a job. Coffee, coffee, basketball is different. I mean, in Nigeria, we have walking leagues. I mean, we have the tough flight leagues. We see football every Our day. local the league, the MPFL, really? Yes, uh, for this season. At least we see football every season. We see basketball uh, football every season in Nigeria. But in basketball, you will not hear of uh, a good league. You will not hear of a league season every, every year. You will not hear of it. So I'm just saying that what happens when these players are not having the right platform here? I mean, River Hoopers... Uh, they're doing well. The likes of Gombe Bulls, the likes of uh, uh, the likes of Quara Falcons. I mean, these are working basketball clubs in Nigeria. But when we don't have the competitiveness when, where these basketball teams in Nigeria come to compete so that we can have at least a good basketball, good basketball players because you, you have to go in there and compete no matter how good you are. Let's see how good you are. Compete with other teams. And we don't see that level of competitiveness here in the country so that's what i'm really worried about there's nothing wrong once again i'm gonna say it. i mean i like the fact that these players are going to have exposure but this is the world cup qualifiers we have nigerian players who are doing well in in the nba the likes of so so, so, so Ma 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 what is the problem we, we, we because you know in recent time we you know, in, in previous years you see you know a lot of these guys come back home you know and play for the national yeah. team you know, so so what what happened? I mean, Udoka has played Hakim the Dream Olajuwon. We even going way back in recent years. We've seen that the, the Americans have been brought in. So, what, what what's the problem this time? I think the problem is the administration. They've not really uh, they've not really shown us how important playing for Nigeria is, especially for basketball. And now, when you play in the NBA, now in the NBA, it is considered as the best league in the world. So people will not even want to play for their country. In football, it's different. Playing for your country helps your CV. But in the NBA, playing for NBA is all you need for your CV. So these players will need a little bit of pride. These players will, will need a little bit of encouragement. These players will need a little bit of 
uh, telling them how important playing for your country is. And the administration is not doing that. The administration is not following talent in the United States. I mean, when we now hear of, of a certain Gabe Vincent who is playing for the Miami Heat, we tried to convince him to come play for the, for the, Super, for the uh, D Tigers. They won't want to come because they didn't make their name. Didn't, you were not there in their story. So how come you just want to get, come get the glory when they already made basketball? So it's going to take a little, a little bit of uh, seriousness. And we're going to start finding these young players in the United States now that it's very early. Because when they have made players already, you can't tell them anything anymore. Well, let's, you know, move away from the Tigers now and look at uh, the Afcon at it. And then you have the young pharaohs of Egypt who have lost uh, or suffered the 1-0 to loss to the Flying Eagles of Nigeria in their Group A stage and or encounter. Now, uh, what exactly are your thoughts? We had anticipated that. I mean, we know that Egypt's national is not a, a weak team that you, you walk past, but um, as much as a lot of persons were not very optimistic about this one, you know, it feels like a plus for us. What are your thoughts? Do you think that we can progress uh, from this, you Brazil, know, from Brazil, this Brazil, stage to another? Team is a good team now. <laughs> the Egyptian team is not that good. I mean, even their senior boys, you only get to hear of uh, Mohamed Salah, El Nini, and the rest. But when you talk of how great e Egyptian football was, uh, let's say about uh, 10 years ago, then you can talk about how good they were. But now, I, I don't think they're a really good side. I watched that game, all credit to Lada Moso, and all credit to Solomon uh, Obamalaka, who has been, I mean, trolled on, uh, on the internet for not being a 20-year-old. That's not my business. But my business is that he did great uh, on the pitch of play, giving Nigeria that one goal win against uh, Egypt. But I think the game that uh, I really saw the weakness of from the Flying Eagles was a game against uh, the Senegalese side. And we, we also need to learn something from it. The Senegalese side were better than us. They were more composed in the midfield. Uh, they were more calculated. But the Flying Eagles were not. They were a little bit calculated against the Egyptians. Although the Egyptians had more chances than they did, they were just very clinical. So going forward, uh, we are playing against Mozambique tomorrow. And uh, I'm seeing Nigeria progressing uh, past or uh, beating Mozambique to progress to the knockout stage. But what happens in the knockout stage when you get to meet other big uh, other big uh, countries from other groups? So it's going to be a little bit difficult if we don't get, uh, get to correct our mistakes, if we don't get to be a little bit more serious, a little bit cl clinical, and a little bit more urgent in, in our play. We're, we are not decisive. The kind of football we are playing, we play football as if we don't want to score. And then when we get a chance, a lucky chance, like some of Bamal uh, did, that cross, we saw many a times that Nigeria had corners and they couldn't convert it. So I felt it was a lucky one for me for that corner to come out clean and for Solomon to, of course, uh, get that uh, get that uh, goal. But sincere credits to Aladdin Boso. He has been able to come back from a defeat against Sen Senegal to beat the host nation, uh, Egypt. So let's just see tomorrow what happens. Nigeria play against Mozambique. Mozambique, not really a good side in the competition so far, uh, losing by three goals against Senegal and playing a nil-nil draw against the host nation, Egypt. So there might not be a minor, but I'm seeing Nigeria are beating them to progress to the knockout stage. Mm. All right. This um, uh, it seems to be, uh, when last week we were here talking about how it was going to be difficult for uh, a tough test for the under-20 and the Flying Eagles, you know, because of the fact they're playing against uh, the Egyptians at home at the Cairo International Stadium. And they've gone ahead to, to defeat the Egyptians in their backyard. Um, what do you think this says about the character of this this team and their their prospects for uh, qualifying for the World Cup and also winning the title? Of course, the World Cup is very important, and the prospect of this team. I've got I've got to start by saying that the leader of the team is uh, an experienced one. A lot of Boso, he knows what winning is all about. He knows how to win, and. Uh, when we, when we talk of uh, qualifying, we need to finish as uh, top four teams. So that is uh, qualifying to the semifinals. We're already halfway through. All we need to do is get past Mozambique and get past our next opponent in the quarterfinals. So just two games away. And I'm pretty sure the boys understand that uh, it's not very far away. The World Cup later on this year in Peru, it is very important for Nigeria and, uh, uh, and the people of Nigeria and as well as uh, people playing the tournament so far. It's a win-win situation. They make the country proud. They make themselves proud. And then uh, they are potential 
properties in the, in the transfer market. So the head coach, Laden Boso, understands how important this is uh, to Nigeria and uh, to these players. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to instill some uh, level of motivation, letting them know, hey, you've mm -hmm. got to do well if you want to go further. And uh, that, that's the prospect I'm looking at. That's the aspect I'm looking at. Ensure that these players know what it means to play for the country and uh, know what it means to play as they are developing their own career. All right. Um, but but it, it's, it's still a bit too close to call because, I mean, it's uh, the group stages. You know, tournament football is quite, quite uh, uh, difficult. The Senegalese have, have you know, qualified. They've wrapped it up. Two wins from two matches, be defeating Nigeria, albeit uh, against 10 men, and, uh, of course, defeating Mozambique. Um, if... Uh, sh should we be really cautious in our optimism for for the, the the flying eagles looking at the fact that they have one game to go against mozambique you seem to have given them the three points already <laughs> but if if senegal um fail to defeat egypt and lose egypt will have four points and um if nigeria lose to mozambique nigeria will have three points mozambique four points should we should we be as optimistic as as you making it sound I mean, I told you that Mozambique have not really had a good tournament, but it doesn't mean we should completely underrate them. I also told you that if Vladimir Bosso can get the boys to be a little bit more calculative, a little bit more clinical, they can get the win against Mozambique. I mean, it's possible that we can get the win against Mozambique. I'm not completely giving it to them, but I'm at least 85% sure that Nigeria can beat Mozambique. And you, you, talk, you talked about us, uh, uh, we should be a little bit cautious. I mean... When you play against uh, Mozambique and you know that you need a win because we, we know as Nigerians we are very uh, used to getting calculators at the end of or at the dining embers of a particular tournament. So in order for us to avoid the calculations, we should go in from the first blast of the whistle and look for an outright win. A draw can also see Nigeria progress, but uh, that is depending on the Senegal and uh, the Senegal and Egypt result. But we should go for an outright win. All right, we, we have to go now. Uh, Monday, Thomas, thank you so much for being part of the show. It's always a delight to speak with you every Friday. All right, Mercy and Kofi, thank you so much for having me on the platform again. You have yourself a great Friday. All right, then. That's the size of it on The Breakfast this morning. And, uh, of course, we thank you so much for being with us this morning, uh, for being with us all through the week, Monday to Friday. And, of course, we'll see you tomorrow in a different dimension <laughs> where we would be you, you sound like you're going to going off for the weekend. You're coming. You're coming to work tomorrow, Mercy. Yes, I'm coming tomorrow. tomorrow. But I'm sure like I'm... Sunday, you need to be here as well no. until the results are announced. Okay. Uh, uh, oh yeah. well, it, so it will be, be every Sunday. It will be every Sunday. Why you say every Sunday? Sunday we're improving. I'm mm -hmm. not sure that we're going to be doing. Did you say every Sunday? Um, but we have election coverage tomorrow right here on Plus TV Africa, and uh, no, that, that's promises very to true. be very interesting. Definitely. So you make sure you join Mercy and uh, the rest of the team right here. Uh, tomorrow morning. Yes, please. And uh, the election studio would open up uh, this evening and will start off from 7 o'clock in the morning up until, you know, Sunday. Just be sure to stay glued to this uh, station right here. The number again is 408 on DSTV and 308 on Star Times. My name is Messi Ibokwo. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Have a good morning. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Have a, a very free um, and valent free election tomorrow. Good morning.